gearhead through and through is my content makes more than a little obvious, so it's probably about time I break down a list like this. I mean, it's been coming for a while, right? And of course, my usual caveat applies. This is not a definitive list, and it is entirely my opinion. If someone is telling you that their top ten list is definitive, they're either lying or trying to sell you something. So before we get any further, let's talk about the categories that Giant Robot Anime falls into. On the one hand, you have your Getter Robos and your Gurren Lagans, which have a new superpower every week and blow up the monster without batting an eyelash, and get the girl and do all that lovely hero stuff. Those are loosely arranged into what common parlance calls super robots. Then you have the type of series that you can't track the plot of quite as easily, real robots. This is of course throwing up your hands and saying that giant robots are cool, but hilariously impractical, so reality is a soft concept here. Robots are cool, but they're not efficient war weapons without a whole ton of caveats to make it work. Additionally, the focus isn't so much on how cool the robot is, but how the series itself deals with people in warfare situations. This is extremely important for understanding the crux of the real robot genre. The mecha are incidental to the world, the characters are what drive the story forward. The politics and the interpersonal struggle is for the most part more important than the battles. One final note is that I am not putting specific shows in a franchise on here, so while I think that Macross Frontier is a better show than a couple of these on the list, it's not on here because it requires Macross beforehand to have its proper impact. Now that we have this out of the way, let's take a gander at this list's honorable mentions. Uh. Escaflone and Aura Battler Dunbean both make it onto the list because they've got about as much in common with a typified real robot show as Game of Thrones does with The Walking Dead. They both have the same general sort of feel to them, but they're not really in the genre proper. See, both series are fantasy shows more than they are robot shows, and while a lot of the trappings of robot shows are in there, there's a heavy emphasis on things that are out-and-out out magical or otherworldly that drives it more than some of the other series. So while Escaflone and Dunbean are both fantastic shows, they're a little too fantastic to fit in our list. Another honorable mention is the real robot segments of Evangelion, which are solidly in keeping, but the problem is that the show's structure is far more super robot at the core than it is real robot. And let's be realistic, when the byline for your robot show is getting the fucking robot Shinji, it gets a nod, but not the Oscar, if you catch my drift. Number 10. Die Guard. What do you do when you want to be a super robot, but your budget is strictly real? You end up with Die Guard, a show about businesses running the defense of the planet and making a bloody goddamn mess of it. The series itself is one of the most real of the real robot shows in consideration of what would likely happen if one was built. Die Guard was created as some sort of promotional advertising in the wake of a giant monster attack. The machine never worked as specs and was mothballed after no monsters appeared for 12 years. However, once the monsters appear once again, it becomes necessary for Die Guard to come out of retirement. The problem is that no one wants to put the money up to protect civilian lives because it's stupid expensive to keep a giant war machine running. You have to load the guns, you have to repair the armor, the chibli bits, all that minutia is not exactly cost effective. But in spite of this, it's good PR, so they carry on in spite of having a budget so wafer thin it would dissolve in a mug of water. The real aspects are so real that it's impossible to call it a super robot show in spite of its somewhat super aspects and the high level of quality nets it at number 10 on this list. Number 9. Southern Cross A lot of Robotech fans and Mecha fans in general think that Genesis Climber Most Speeda is a better show than the one that preceded it in the Robotech saga, which was Super Dimensional Cavalry Southern Cross. I feel a bit more in the opposite, for very simple reasons. I like the designs better, I like the characters better, and I think they do a better job of hardish sci-fi than the other one does. And this is a bit of compare and contrast for me, because taken as itself, I think Southern Cross is a good and surprisingly dark little robot romp. In general, I think putting a lady at the helm of a robot series at this time was pretty ballsy, and it led to some cool twists, and moreover, I like the mechs more than I like the ones in Mospita. But since they're generally hard to separate in Western minds because of their connection to Robotech, I'll give them a double bill here, because they're both damn fine little robot shows, with interesting designs and characters that surprise you with their complexity. Southern Cross actually got cancelled before its run was up, which means the ending got a little kooky, but to me that only strengthened the way the story wound up, 
because they're still pretty boned at the end. And while Mospita got more of a clean ending, they're still superb little pieces. Number 8. Full Metal Panic. While it may not seem terribly real when you consider that even the people piloting and repairing the robots say that it doesn't make physical sense, and there's some sort of semi-mystical power at work for the point of the story, Full Metal Panic has the distinction of being the only show on this list that came out after the turn of the century. It works well, and the machines are all very blocky and militaristic, but they aren't the ultimate weapon that some robots end up being in these style of shows, and the series itself knows exactly how to balance warfare and school comedy in a way that doesn't make me want to yak. It is pretty much the best original robot show to come out in the 2000s, since most of the other ones were spin-offs. The show itself totals 52 episodes, but the second and third series were bizarre splits, where one set of 13 episodes was pure comedy, and it works pretty well, and the other was pure robot story, which might turn off some viewers. But hey, the series works just perfectly, and one of the few criticisms I can level at it is, where's my goddamn third series? Number 7. Zabungul. Combat Mecha Zabungu dropped in 1982 and was another production by the granddaddy of real robot shows, the Right Honorable Yoshiyuki Tamino. Following a team of raiders called the Sand Rats, the series would have some of the most inhuman robot designs to date until Aura Battler Dunbeam came out the next year. In spite of the toyetic look of the main robot, the series as a whole had mecha that scarcely looked human and acted the part as well. The extremely high tech levels with the extremely rustic backdrop would show up in Guncross Sword and Trigun as well, which only added to the strength of those series. The only reason it's not higher on the list is because another series did it better one year earlier. Number 6. Lazner. When it comes to hard sci-fi, real robots aren't exactly the hardest of the hard, but they do have some series to take it a little bit more seriously than others. Blue Comet SBT Lazner chronicles humanity's tenuous steps towards the stars and the reaction of the interstellar community to them. The shadow of the Cold War looms over the Martian UN base when out of nowhere, the forces of Grados appeared to combat the human forces. The Grados are not monsters, they're acting in what they consider to be self-defense. But as is often the case in these series, self-defense leaves collateral damage. In spite of the super robot trappings of the story, the super-powered tracer weapons are most definitively in the real robot camp, having very clear and strict limitations to their design and having been designed for space exploration. Lazner was slated for an American release in the early 2000s, following the success of Gundam, but according to Bandai, Sunrise gave them damaged video masters, and they were unable to release it satisfactorily. More the pity, as the series retains all of its quality and efficacy even now, 30 years on. Number 5. Pat Labor. When robots are as common as cars, then it takes robot cops to take criminals down. What started as a somewhat goofy series about Japan in the late 1990s grew into its own as a series that could go from taking down a jaywalker to saving all of Tokyo without blinking an eye. Pat Labor is Police Academy, Law and & Order, and Gundam all rolled into one bizarre package, but the strength of the series lies in the clever plotting and the simple but effective characters. Primary among them is Noah Izumi, one of the first proper lady robot pilots. She's not some bombshell or a doughy-faced Lolita. She's just a very average-looking girl with a strong sense of duty and a knack for robot piloting. There's a lot of density and depth to Pat Labor and a whole lot of Pat Labor to go through, but it's really worth picking up this series in any iteration. This show is a whole lot smarter than I think anyone really gives it credit for, but anyone that does pick it up is in for a real treat. Number four, Nadesco. Oh, Nadesco. Discounting the second season that was a Sega Saturn game, the show still holds up fantastically and is one of the few shows on this list that I say, watch the dub for. This show combines a sense of zaniness alongside a lot of inside humor with dramatic beats that have no less resonance for their inclusion alongside the comedic elements. Combining the best elements of space opera with a riotous sense of its own craziness, the show hits on almost more levels than it should be allowed to. Which makes the fact that we never got our second season put to airwaves that much more tragic. Between the characters that will have you crying with laughter one minute and crying with sorrow the next, mecha designs that perform perfectly in a story that gets a little too real in its portrayal of politics on both sides, Nadesco is a series that deserves a million times more love than it gets. When I can show people one single episode and get an instant buy out of them, that should sum up the show's strengths pretty accurately. Nadesco will have you desperate for more and wondering how it got to be six in the morning already.
Number 3. Dugram. While Gundam created the genre in 1979, Dugram can really be credited with proving that it was a viable genre. First airing in 1981, it was set on a backwater planet that had a group of near barbarians running its mecha. Likewise, its main machine was nothing special in the scheme of things, and didn't even have some sort of impressive gimmick. In spite of that, the series has no less intensity, and arguably even more than a typical super robot show. The primitive style and brutality of the combat does wonders for the longevity of this series, and the combination of Mad Max-like character designs and high but not that high tech was an extremely potent combination. Likewise, the story itself, focusing on a civil war between Earth and Deloyer, the colony where most of the series takes place, works on multiple levels and features the kind of political jockeying that would become a staple of the genre. This series also was a heavy influence on the look of Zabungal a few years later. Because of its success, Dugram would also directly influence the next show on this list, which came out in 1983. Number 2. Votoms Armored Troopers Votoms aired in 1983 and showed what the genre had in store for viewers with its unrelentingly dark tone and extremely militarized mech designs. The series has had far-reaching implications for a lot of series going forward, and the dirty style of sci-fi that Votoms brought to the table was one of a kind. The story of Chiriko Kuvi and his desperate race across the galaxy to uncover the conspiracy that cost him his rank and made him a criminal is one of the better in the genre, stretching across 52 episodes and showing just how nasty the genre could get. They swap out Votoms like most people change shoes, and for the most part, this series is not particularly toy-friendly either, which frees it up from a lot of things. The show has almost as many spin-offs as Gundam has, which speaks to its longevity, and their style of sci-fi storytelling has yet to be struck in such a resonant way in recent years. Go find Votoms, go watch Votoms, and see for yourself. Number 1. Super Dimensional Fortress Macross. The show that would be Robotech is a fantastic series even without the influence it had on American airwaves. Macross is a series that, almost more than Gundam out of the gate, embraced the harder side of sci-fi and created a lot of tropes we see in shows that would come later. The story of the SDF-1 and its complement of robot fighter jets fighting against the overwhelming forces of the Zentradi still resonates today, and its proud proclamation that what ends war is compassion and not who has the biggest guns is still a lesson that humanity could stand to listen to again. This show has some of the best work that Shoji Kawamori has put out since, with simple and elegant machines for the humans based on American F-14s and F-15s, and the near-organic looks of the Zentradi forces. The series still looks pretty good for something that's older than I am, and the characters have the best mix of simplicity and complexity that will make them stand the test of time, even though the show was supposed to happen in 2009. Gotta love that next Sunday AD in the future prediction, huh? The greatest tragedy of Macross is that because of Robotech, the ability to get the original series is expensive, and its later spin-offs are near impossible to find. Tragic, but it is the state of anime. Friends, I love giant robots. Most of you are into anime because of Dragon Ball Z or Naruto or Bleach or whatever. That's cool. I'm into anime because of Gundam Wing. I got interested in robot history because of Gundam 0079. I laughed my way through episodes of Sergeant Frog because I got all the mecha references when no one else did. Mecha are important to me. And yet, it looks for all the world like their fire has gone out of the universe. But in spite of that, Mecha is still my first home. This list of series are the kinds of shows that are basically like putting on a comfy pair of socks to me. It's what I can rely on to be reminded that it's not all skirts and idols in this medium that I really do love so dearly. And so to quote Amaro Ray, I still have a place to go back to. And nothing feels as good as that. <laughs>